this race where we're going for 250 laps, $50,000 to the winner. Huge payout, biggest ever. And late model stock car racing happening right here in Lucama, North Carolina. My name's Kevin Bullock. Late model stock car qualifying. Coming your way next to set the field. But who's going to win this $50,000? Later on today, we've got Bandoleros, Mini Stocks, Legends, Southern Lightning Modified, Street Stocks, and Any Cars coming your way. And we are live now with your free preview on our social media platforms, SNMPark.tv, Pit Row TV, Speed Sport. Everybody teaming up together. Got a great group of production folks. Got a great group of, of folks down in the infield that are just getting a whole lot done. Tony Stevens, the voice of the Cars Tour. Puts on an excellent show, and we're getting you set for late model stock car qualifying here. We've got some news to get to, some some breaking news. We'll hold on to that for a minute because we've, as we've said, we've got a lot to get to today here at Southern National. But some, some big stories coming your way here in just a few moments here from Southern National Motorsports Park. You see the Bills Grill food truck down there that's one of the best in the business had bill's grill this morning for breakfast actually before we headed over here to the racetrack so shout out to will jenkins and his folks so here we go late model stock car qualifying <laughs> a little up the track there <laughs> you get a dead lap here for the late model stock cars you might as well use it got carter langley on the racetrack now from zebulon north carolina currently 60 here in lucama not a lot of wind a little bit humid. You can't really tell it, though. See what Carter can do here in the Quality Welding Services GXS Wraps machine. For Carter Langley, the young man from Zebulon, not too far down the road. Lap number one, he's in the 15507 range. 15507. So Carter Langley starting off late model stock car qualifying. Here at Southern National Motorsports Park. If you're joining us on SNMPark.tv, welcome. Happy to have you. Subscribe to today. Subscribe to tomorrow. Carter Langley slows down just a little bit on lap number two, so he'll keep that 15.507. With Clay Jones on the racetrack, late model stock car champion at Wake County Speedway this year, Goldsboro, North Carolina native. Driving the big boys Chevrolet. They're right down the road from us here in Lucama, North Carolina. So Clay got his dead lap done, took the green flag. White flag in the air. First one that'll count for Clay. 15-5-5-3. 15-5-5-3 for Clay Jones. To Carter Langley's 15507. Getting you set for tomorrow's $50,000 to win race. Checkered flag in the air. Clay slows down a little bit on lap number two. He's in the 15 sixes on that second lap. So two 15 fives to start out. Here's Ryan Wilson on the racetrack. Let's head downstairs to Terry. He's got an update with the autos by Nelson team and the 22 machine of Mike Looney. Yeah, Kevin, they spun out early in practice. We had an hour practice before anything happened. Uh, he goes around in three and four, broke a brake rotor, and caused a couple suspension issues. They said it was fixable, but they didn't want to put the team or the driver in a bad situation, so they decided to pack it up. It's a one-off race still for this team, so we don't know what the future's going to hold, but we'll see them down the road. So breaking news from down there in the pits, Mike Looney not making his debut with the Autos by Nelson.com team. And so that's big news down there. Ryan Wilson with a 15 491. He's to the top of the chart. That Ford Crate getting it done down there for Ryan Wilson out of the top three cars that have gone so far. That's big news. Mike Looney has become quite famous in late model stock car racing. Valley Star Credit Union winner shocked the world about five years ago, taking home a grandfather clock. Here's Doug Barnes on the racetrack, another Virginia slash Maryland driver. He races in Virginia a lot. He's from Maryland, from Forest Hill, Maryland. Does a lot of racing at Dominion Raceway in Spotsylvania, Virginia. 
See what Doug Barnes can do here in that 88 machine. He's to the top of the chart by five one thousandths of a second. Doug Barnes in the 15 4 8 6. 15 4 8 6 for Doug Barnes. Trying to pick up a little bit of time here. Can he do it on lap number two? Yes, he does. A 4 7 5. Picked up 11 hundredths of a second. 15 4 7 5 for Doug Barnes. Outpacing Ryan Wilson, Carter Langley, and Clay Jones here early on in late model stock car qualifying. Here's Daniel Von Cannon on the racetrack now. Had a really good run in the Thanksgiving Classic last year. Started 24th, got all the way up to 6th. Did the Fuquay Arena North Carolina driver, and then it all went bad from there. Talked to Daniel last night, said he's got a pretty good car this time around. Can he make it happen in this year's Thanksgiving Classic? He's fifth out of the five cars so far on that first qualifying lap, a 15-6-3-8 for Daniel Von Cannon. 15-6-3-8. Can he improve on lap number two? No. Slowed down a little bit. Still in the 15-6s, so if consistency's anything, Daniel Von Cannon's got it, but he's fifth out of five so far. Well, here's one of the best in the business in late model stock car racing. Past winner of this race, not controversial fashion at all, Matt McCall, NASCAR Cup Series crew chief from Denver, North Carolina. On the racetrack now. In the Black's Tire Machine. White flag in the air. Pretty good lap for McCall. 15 4 8 6. 11 one hundredths off of Doug Barnes's fast time so far. Matt McCall, past winner of our Thanksgiving Classic. And he's to the top of the board with a 15 4 0 9. 15 4 0 9 for Matt McCall. So provisionally, McCall at the top of the chart. Here's Brendan Butterbean McQueen. Let's check in downstairs and see what's going on. He caught up with Doug Barnes down there. Yeah, I got Doug Barnes down here in that 88 machine. You were sitting P1 when you come down pit road, but now you're sitting provisional second. How's the track changed? How's the track changed over practice into qualifying here? Did you say we're second now? Uh, I mean, I don't really think it changed too much. Uh, I'm not too happy with that lap. We, uh, I don't know, we had a really good handling car, and then we just went out there and didn't do what we should have did, so I'm hoping this holds up on being top five. Maybe I'm being a little hard on myself, but I, I don't think it's a very good lap as of right now. That's Doug Barnes, driver of the number 88. Back to you up in the booth, Kevin. Well, now he's sitting provisionally in third because the butter bean from the Tidewater just ran a 1540 and then a 1539. Two laps, both the fastest in the field so far, right on top of each other by a thousandth of a second. Put Butterbean Queen in the old school gaming machine to the top of the chart. Now, if you're taking over under odds, this is a pretty good one. You may recognize this machine from a week ago driven by Dale Earnhardt Jr. Not so this week, but still one of the absolute best in the business from Hendersonville, Tennessee, Josh Berry. Had a heck of a season in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Saw him win at Charlotte Motor Speedway in person earlier this year. Here he is at Southern National Motorsports Park. Josh Berry, third fastest on lap number one, a 15-4-2-0. 15-4-2-0 for the NASCAR Xfinity Series regular. Driving for Junior Motorsports then, driving the Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet now. And to the top of the chart, Josh Berry's 15-3-9-4. 15.394 by five one thousandths of a second over Queen just a moment ago. So provisionally, the number three, Josh Berry on top of qualifying here for late model stock car qualifying for the 2022 Solid Rock Carriers Thanksgiving Classic. Let's check downstairs with Terry. He's caught up with Matt McCall. Yeah, I got Matt McCall down here in the 51 machine. You're sitting provisional third at the moment. What's the car going to do in the race, you think? Nah, it's a long race. Yeah, I messed that up there. Should have run a little better, but a little rusty, I think, maybe. Uh, I mean, it's going to be slick. Long race, a little bit of strategy, you know. So, I mean, it's going to it's gonna be an interesting race with all the different layouts with the pitting and stuff. That's Matt McCall. Talk about a guy that knows about pit strategy. <laughs> He's one of them. 
I think he's calling his own shots today. Connor Mosack on the track right now. Slotted in with a 15-5-8-3. That's eight out of the nine cars so far. So it's Barry, Queen, McCall, Barnes, and Wilson, your top five. Then it's Langley, Clay Jones, Connor Mosack, Daniel Von Cannon, the nine cars that have gone so far. Connor Jones out of Fredericksburg, Virginia. On the racetrack now. I believe it's his last race for Justin Johnson's folks in that number 44 machine. He's been racing a little bit everywhere. Been pretty darn good at it, too. Wheeling that Toyota Camry. Let's see what Connor does on lap number one. Slots into seventh fastest at a 15.550. 15.550. So here's Jones. Can he pick it up on lap number two? Yes, he can. Up to fourth fastest with a 15.474. Carson Quapel on the check on the track. Let's check down with Terry downstairs. Yeah, I got last week's winner, Brendan Queen. You uh, you had a good car last week. This is a different car. What are you going to do here? Are you going to win this one too? I hope so. Uh, we hadn't been that good all weekend. Been uh, been fighting some uh, steering issues and some handling, and then uh, you know Barry and I were right there together last year, and he barely beat us there, but qualified a lot faster than I thought we were. I didn't think we had that much speed in it, but hopefully it'll hold up somewhere towards the front. Um, and then we just keep defenders on and have a shot tomorrow. But what a week it's been. I'm just happy to be here and hopefully have a shot. That would be the 0-3 right there. That was a jubilant victory lane down at Florence Motor Speedway last week. Carson Quapel was not good on his first lap, but he picked it up to sixth fastest in the iRacing.com Chevrolet on this lap. So here's a poll winner from not too long ago at the Valley Star Credit Union 300 at the Martinsville Speedway. Stacy Perrier from South Boston, Virginia taking the green flag here at Southern National Motorsports Park. Stacy was all over the place that warm-up lap in the turn one. And that car was evil a year ago here at the Thanksgiving Classic, but he did some yeoman's work, was out of his car every break we had a year ago up under his own car working on that thing. Slowest of the 12 cars so far in that Hicks Reynolds per year race car parts machine. 12th out of the 12 cars so far in that Chevrolet. Trying to pick it up lap number two. He will not. And way off is Stacy per year with a 15.758 on that second lap. And here's another one that you might want to put some money on. Also in a pure year machine, this being pure year tank lines, Deke McCaskill, originally from Benson, North Carolina, calls Raleigh home these days in the Ford Mustang. Takes the green flag. One of the only people I've seen that can work, make the outside line work at South Austin Speedway consistently was this guy right here. One of the best in the business of the Cars Tour as well. Deke on lap number one, ninth out of the 13 cars so far, is Deke McCaskill. Deke a really good long run guy. Qualifying not always been his favorite thing. He'll like that though, up to fourth fastest with a 15-4-3-7. 15-4-3-7, Deke McCaskill from Benson, North Carolina out of the 13 cars that have qualified so far for the 2022 Solid Rock Carriers Thanksgiving Classic. Let's check downstairs, see if we can catch up with Carson Quapple. Yeah, I got Carson Quapple right here in the I race at number eight. You're sitting provisional six at the moment. What's the car and race trim to qualifying trim? What's the difference there? Oh, uh, I don't know. We tightened up a bunch right there for some reason. I really don't know why. I thought we had a really good car in practice and I thought we were going to have a really good car for qualifying here, but uh, just got really, really tight. Uh, kind of unfortunate. I thought we had a little better effort than that, but I think our car should race good, and well, did you, I guess we'll just have to see. That'd be the number eight for Junior Motorsports, Carson Quaffle. Sitting seventh out of 13 so far. Here's Michael Harden, another Virginia driver in a Toyota Camry. Raced for years and years at South Boston Speedway. 
not the qualifying run that he wanted. 14th out of the 14 cars so far, 15-8-5-3. 15-8-5-3 on that second lap, and he slowed down from his first lap. So Michael Harden not going to be happy with that one. Here's Logan Clark from Mechanicsville, Virginia. And I saw this car on social media earlier this week. And that's a throwback scheme, and that's a good-looking one. Ford Mustang nose adorning Logan Clark's machine. And we got some debris out here on the racetrack. It came off of Logan Clark's car. I'm trying to see what that is. White flag in the air. Clark slotting in 12th out of 15 cars so far. Don't know if the officials have seen that debris as of yet. Logan Clark coming around for lap number two. That's in turn number three. So here's Justin Johnson back to his original number. The ABC hosiery Ford Mustang. Justin, who learned under Barry Beggerly at Orange County Speedway, has run the number 44 for years and years, originally ran 81 when he first got started at Orange County, compared to Beggerly's 82. Johnson, first official lap for Justin. He's 11th out of 16 late models that have gone so far, so we're right at halfway through qualifying with Justin Johnson coming around for yet another lap. Can he pick up from 11th? He'll stay right there. Second lap, a 15-6-5-2 for the Roxboro, North Carolina driver in Justin Johnson. So Charlie Watson now on the racetrack. He's from Lenore, North Carolina. Driving a Toyota Camry this time around at Southern National Motorsports Park. Takes the green flag from Brandon Willard in the Solid Rock Carriers flag stand. Sailing it off into turn number three. Got a little bit of the apron there in the middle of the corner. Up to 10th fastest, though. Out of 17 so far with a 15.506. For Charlie Watson, the Lenore, North Carolina driver. And he slows down on lap number two. He start hitting the apron every lap. You'll go faster. New strategy here at Southern National Motorsports Park. We were talking about that piece of debris off of Logan Clark's car that's up there in turn number three. I think they're going to run up there and grab that real quick if they have a moment. So they got that piece of debris, so we're good to go here. Good job by our camera guys finding that. Came off of Logan Clark's number 15. So here's Dylan Newsom making the jump. He's another Wayne County native, Goldsboro, North Carolina. He and Michael O'Brien really close. Good friends, raced together for a long time. Newsom making the jump to... Late model stock cars. He takes the green flag. He's the past champion here at Southern National Motorsports Park. I believe in our Charger division. Let's see what Dylan can do here on lap number one. 13th out of 18. Let's send it down to Terry, who's caught up with Roxborough, North Carolina's Justin Johnson. Yeah, I'm down here with the driver of the 81 machine. You finish second here a bunch. Uh, you want to race here. But you race the Cars Tour a lot. You've been out of the seat for a little bit. What's it feel like getting back in the rhythm here? Well, it's been a lot of work, honestly. Uh, you know, can't thank all my guys. We worked really hard to get here. And, um, you know, I've always had, uh, had pretty good cars at, for this race and uh, should have won it quite a few times. But, you know, um, we're going to give it one more shot and try to go for 50K on Sunday. want to thank ABC Hosiery, uh, Chase James Race, and everyone who's helped us on this deal. Uh, you know, we worked really hard. r and Race Cars worked really hard to get here. Set it back up to the booth for the rest of qualifying here. So Justin is happy to be back in the seat. Here's Cade Brown on the racetrack now. Another per-year machine out there on the speedway, the Chevrolet. 
Cade, a little bit loose everywhere. And it shows 17th out of 19 so far with a 15-7-1-6. Cade from Denver, North Carolina. Power sliding again off the turn number four. That's this Sitton County Line Raceway, which is just right up the road from us in Elm City. That ain't going to work too well for you out here. Got to find some bite in that number 16 machine, who's 17th so far. Jonathan Finley on the racetrack now. Had a lot of success here at Southern National Motorsports Park over the years. See what Jonathan can do here. He's got his warm-up lap taken care of. Brandon Willard just showed him the green flag. That elite transport. GXS Rap Chevrolet. Lap number one in the books for Finley. 14th out of now 20. Qualifiers so far here. From Bristow, Virginia is Jonathan Finley. Got a great contingent of Virginia Commonwealth drivers here today. So Finley on that second lap. Still not going to be quite what he wants, but he did crack his way into the top five in a 15-4-5-6, a nice pickup from lap number one to lap number two for Jonathan Finley. He'll take that all day long. Connor Hall on the racetrack now. The 77C, he's out of Hampton, Virginia. Langley Speedway regular. You see him there if you're watching with us on SM Park.tv. Got the old Arca Menard series patch on his driver's suit. That means you've been doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that. 17th out of 21 on lap number one in the town bank machine. See what this Chevrolet can do here on lap number two. A little bit of a slide off of turn four, but to the top of the board. Connor Hall on lap number two knocks Josh Berry off the provisional pole by eight one thousandths of a second. Connor Hall with a 15-3-8-6. Mega lap from Connor Hall. Andrew Grady on the racetrack now. The Gildan Chevrolet for Mike Darn Racing. ABC Hosiery on the side of this car as well from Youngsville, North Carolina. Glad to see Andrew get a haircut. He was letting it grow out there, let's say, recently. Got that taken care of. See what he can do on lap number one, Andrew Grady. 15th out of 22 cars so far to take time and qualify. How about that lap by Connor Hall? Becomes the third driver to break into the 15 threes. Ooh, and a little bit of contact with the wall. Off of turn number four for Grady. A little bit of blue paint flying there. But he got up to sixth fastest. So he got everything he could get off of turn four. Let's check in downstairs, see what Josh Berry's got going on. Yeah, you just, uh, you just got knocked off the pole right there. But you were a crew chief last week. You're a racer this week. What else you got on your plate? You gonna be another winner here? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's been a busy couple weeks for sure, but uh, no, I just just been fun coming back here, running the late model car. Obviously, just uh, you know, really want to thank Dale and Johnny Morris, Bass Pro Shops, everybody that helped put this all together for us the last couple weeks. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think our car's okay. I really, I really don't love how it's been this weekend. We've worked really hard on it, trying to get it better. I think we need to. We need to uh, be a little bit better for tomorrow, I think, to give ourselves a little bit better chance. But, you know, we'll have a decent starting spot. It's going to be a long race. I mean, lots, lots going to happen. So we're just going to try to just work hard all day and stay in it. That's Josh Berry, driver of the number three Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet. Just got knocked off provisional pole. Dean Shiflett, we were talking about the old East Carolina Motor Speedway earlier. Dean was one of a handful of really good drivers at that racetrack. He's up to 10th fastest on that second lap. He was power sliding off of turn number four. He got it to bite not quite as well as Grady did, but they were scuffing the wall down there off of turn number four. Here's Caden Honeycutt on the racetrack now. Milado, Texas is Caden Honeycutt. See what he can do in that RNS race cars machine. 19th fastest out of 24 on lap number one. He's in the 15 fives. And picked it up to 16th. Also in a 15-5. 15-5-07 the lap of record. 
for Caden Honeycutt in that Toyota Camry. Out of the 24 cars that have gone so far, we talked about a couple of NASCAR Xfinity Series drivers in the field today. Here's Jeb Burton from Halifax, Virginia, right next door to South Boston in a solid rock carrier's machine. And he's loose off the of turn four, getting the green flag is Jeb Burton, son of Ward. Jeb Burton now on the racetrack. Got a little partnership with the Sellers racing team. See what Jeb can do on lap number one. 18th fastest out of 25 so far with a 15.525 for Jeb Burton. 15.525 for Jeb. Trying to pick it up on lap number two. Got a little sponsorship from State Water Heaters. They've been with Jeb for a long time. Nice pickup up to fifth fastest for Jeb Burton. Cracking into the top five qualifiers with a 15-4, 3-4, 15-4-3-4 for Jeb Burton. Nice lap on the second one. So here's Mason Bailey out on the racetrack now. He's in a Chevrolet-powered machine today out of Richmond, Virginia. Mason races literally everywhere. <laughs> he's hard to keep up with because he's all over the place. You'll see in one place one week, one week the next. And Mason, the slowest of our qualifiers on lap number one, 16-0-6-9. We've seen some guys in this second half of qualifying kind of taking it easy on lap number one and running a really good second lap. See where Mason ended up on this run. 23rd out of 26, so... That was the strategy. It didn't work out for Mason there. 23 out of 26 with Jody Miesemer on the track now. A little Sam Ard throwback scheme on this Ford Performance Ford Mustang. Win always on the side of Miesemer's cars as well. He's from Sanford, North Carolina these days. Really good in a modified car too is Jody Miesemer. Put the fenders on today to bring this late model stock car out for qualifying. See what Jody can do on lap number one. He's not going to like that. 24th out of 27 for Miesemer. Lap number two for Jody. Coming off turn number four. A little bit better. 21st with a 15.582. 15.582 for Jody Miesemer. So only a handful of cars to go here in late model stock car qualifying. 27 have taken time so far for qualifying. 27 have taken time so far. Top Gun Motorsports, folks, climbing the high banks of Southern National now after a short delay. Here's Chase Burrow now on the racetrack. Remember, he's in the modified race, too, this afternoon in the Southern Lightning Modifieds that are going to go for 40 laps here. From King William, Virginia, is Chase Burrow. He's in the zero in his Southern Lightning Modified. He's in the eight here for the late model stock car race tomorrow for 250 laps. Chase Burrow taking the green flag from Brandon Willard. It's hard to keep up with Brandon, our flagman, by the way. He's everywhere, too. Let's see if we can check in downstairs with Terry. He's called up with Halifax, Virginia's Jeb Burton. Yeah, I got Jeb Burton here in the 27 machine. And first lap, not so great. Second lap, you stepped up, you jumped in the top five. What's the difference between those two laps there? Uh, tires just coming in. Um, man, we've been struggling a little bit with this race car. It's a brand new car. Um, Malone makes an awesome race car, so we're, we're going to keep working on it. Uh, it's only our second day on it, and HC's back at home and Peyton's back at home so we're trying to carry the, the the banner this weekend but proud of the guys it was a good pickup we still got some work to do but appreciate solid rock carriers career tank lines for allowing us to go race um, without them I wouldn't be here and a lot of us wouldn't be here either because we wouldn't have the uh, funding to, to race those two companies help a lot of short track racers so thankful to be here back at my roots and hopefully we can have a good run tomorrow thank you so much Josh Barry that is, uh, <laughs> that's Chet Burton I'm so sorry so Jeb Burton carrying the banner for the Sellers crowd as Peyton welcomed the new member to the family last night. So congratulations to everybody 
with the Sellers family back home in Danville, Virginia. On behalf of everybody here at Southern National Motorsports Park and Pit Road TV, Speed Sport, congratulations goes out to the entire Sellers family. Tristan McKee, all 12 years old of him, from Williamsburg, Virginia, in the Ford Fusion on the track now. The 2022 Orange County Speedway, late model stock car track champion, taken to the high banks of Southern National for his qualifying effort. He ran the legend car race last night. He's going to run it a little bit later on this afternoon as well. So Tristan is 20th of 29 cars. So position number 20 of 29 for Tristan on lap number one. Catch him in the black number seven legend car later on this afternoon. A white late model. Nice. Up to ninth fastest for Tristan McKee. 15-4-5-7. 4-5-7 for McKee. So here's Austin Samaro on the track from Landrum, South Carolina, driving the Ted Cook machine. And we're just about done with late model stock car qualifying here in a couple of moments. Samaro, can he knock Connor Hall off the pole? He continues to get better and better. Does Samaro behind the wheel of these cars. So first lap of record for Austin. And he's 28th out of 30 with a 15-7-2-8. Was he sandbagging just a little bit? We're about to find out. Samaro. Back to the gas off of turn number four. Checkered flag in the air. And he picked up a couple of spots up to 24th out of 30 so far with a 15-6-3-3. So we got about a half a second between the field here. Connor Hall's 15-3-8-6 to Michael Harden's 15-8-5-3. Here's Trinity, North Carolina's Jared Fryer in that Ford Mustang. And he's got solid rock carriers adorned on both sides of that machine. Jared, our last qualifier of the day. So it's either him or Connor Hall on the pole. White flag in the air from Brandon Willard. Fryer. Seventh fastest on lap number one, a 15 4 4 4 for Jared Fryer. He's going to have to pick up a half attempt to knock Connor Hall off the pole. Can he do it? No, he stays in position number seven. So that'll do it for late model stock car qualifying. All 31 cars. In the field, taking time, but it's going to be Connor Hall on provisional pole with a 15 386. 15 386 for Connor Hall, Josh Berry, Brendan Butterbean Queen, Matt McCall, Jeb Burton. Your top five qualifiers here for the Thanksgiving Classic at Southern National Motorsports Park. It's Deke McCaskill, Jared Fryer, Andrew Grady, Jonathan Finley, and Tristan McKee your top 10 qualifiers. Let's go down to pole sitter, Connor Hall. Yeah, I'm standing by the guy who's going to start P1 for $50,000. Track position's huge. You just got the money spot. What's this thing going to race like? I don't know. It's This year's so different from the last. I raced a bunch here in like 2016 and stuff, and then we never came back until last year. And I feel like last year compared to this year, you had so much more grip. And I don't know if it's because of the lack of racing here this year or whatnot. But I feel like it's really abrasive. It's truly driving like a low-grip racetrack. So I feel like saving will be a lot more important. Um, I don't know. You're going to see a lot of comer, you know, comer and goers. And uh, I don't know. I just hope, hope we play it smart. You know, we've had a couple, you know, a rough little patch of races here. So regardless, just looking to try to turn that around and give the Chad Bryant Racing Group a really good effort and, you know, hopefully get some results that we deserve. That's your pole sitter for $50,000, Connor Horn. So great run by him. Pole time once again, a 15-3-8-6 for Connor Hall. So let's give you your full field rundown, how they're going to start tomorrow for 250 laps to win $50,000 for the 2022 Solid Rock Carriers Thanksgiving Classic. It's going to be that man, Connor Hall, on the pole. Josh Berry going to roll off in second. Brendan Queen, third. Matt McCall going to start fourth. Jeb Burton in fifth. Deke McCaskill starts in 6th, Jared Fryer 7th, Andrew Grady 8th, Jonathan Finley 9th, 
Tristan McKee, 10th. Logan Clark going to roll off 11th. Dylan Newsom will go from the 12th spot. Dean Shiflet 13th. Connor Jones, 14th. Doug Barnes in 15th. Carson Quapple going to start back in the mid-pack, 16th on the grid. Ryan Wilson going to get it a go from 17th. Charlie Watson, 18th. Caden Honeycutt, 19th. Carter Langley will go from 20th. Justin Johnson, 21st. Clay Jones, 22nd. Jody Miesemer, 23rd. Connor Mosack, 24th. Austin Samaro, 25th. Daniel Von Cannon going to have to start deep in the field again this year. Can he do it again, making his way up into the top 10, 26th? Chase Burrow, 27th. Mason Bailey going to start 28th. Cade Brown, 29th. Stacey Perrier, 30th. And Michael Harden, shotgun on the field. 31st and final starter for tomorrow's 250 lap. $50,000 $50,000 win. We'll say goodbye to everybody that's been watching the free p- preview on our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube as well. So make sure you give us a hit that subscribe button. SNM Park.TV. Find us on Pit Road TV as well and on Speed Sport. Don't miss it. It's going to be one of the best there's ever been. The 2022 Solid Rock Carriers Thanksgiving Classic from Southern National Motorsports Park. The field is set. For tomorrow's racing, 75 laps for the limited late models, 250 laps for the late model stock cars.